To better understand estimator objectives, we're going to cover a simple example problem where we're going to estimate uh, motion uh, by minimizing a sum of squared errors between the uh, model values and uh, measured var values. And that we're just going to square uh, that difference. We could also just write a summation here uh, for all of the points at which it's uh, measured. Okay, so we'll go ahead and set up this problem. We have uh, here just two equations. So you could think of this as uh, you know, acceleration. Uh, this would be your velocity. And then this would be <clears throat> your position. Okay, so we have acceleration or the derivative of velocity equals acceleration and the derivative of position equals velocity. This is just a one dimensional uh, problem. We have, we have some initial conditions where this is the initial uh, position and uh, initial velocity. Okay. Okay, so those are initial conditions. We're going to set up and solve this optimization problem. Here's some data um, that we're going to use as well. We have time values and then also uh, measured. Okay, again, that was our measured value right there. So there are measured positions. This may have come from like a GPS or some other source. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and just set up. Uh, we can actually just download some of these files. Uh, they're available on the uh, course website. So let me just show you how to get to that, apmonitor.com slash do for dynamic optimization. And uh, so once you're on the course website, come down to um, estimation, and we're gonna be looking at estimator um, objectives. Okay, so go ahead and select that. Um, it gives a little bit of detail about the uh, squared error objective, L1 norm objective, uh, some nomenclature as well. And we're just gonna, uh, download this example problem. Just work with the files as they are right now and then change them to give us different objectives for this optimization problem. Okay, so that is finished downloading. I'll go ahead and go retrieve it and um, okay, there it is. Motion estimation. Alright, I'll go ahead and paste that here on my desktop and just make sure you extract it uh, before you start working with it. Okay, so um, okay, so here's our uh, folder. If you open up the MATLAB or the Python versions, go ahead and just run that. Uh, just make sure it's going to work. And um, <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to do. I'm going to run it. Um, it's going to take those uh, measured values and then try to align uh, the model and measured values. And uh, so that took about uh, less than a second to solve. And uh, then we're going to have a plot that comes up. <clears throat> okay, uh, here's the uh, measured uh, and predicted in the in the top graph. You can see uh, the red is going to be the measured uh, position, and then the blue is the predicted. Okay, and so the thing that we adjusted is the acceleration um, and also the velocity to give us uh, this profile of position. Um, now let's say we know that, um, for example, the acceleration. Um, it goes up and then down. We know that that's not uh, realistic, and so we might may want to limit um, the acceleration to, you know, for that object to a more reasonable value. So constraints can be part of the estimation as well. Let's go ahead and just add those in. Um, if you come to the file, just go ahead and uncomment these lines right here. We're going to limit the acceleration. The upper or the lower is going to be negative a thousand. Okay, so that's going to be uh, about a hundred G's, okay, for that object, or uh, positive a thousand. So, some very uh, aggressive acceleration there. But let's just say those are the, those are the limits, okay. So I'm going to save it and then run it again, and then when it runs, it'll show me a different solution. Now, the objective is going to get worse because um, we have some constraints in there, and constraints can only um, keep the objective function value the same or make it worse. Um, and so, so you can see there's a little bit more deviation there, but it, uh, this may have been, you know, a bad uh, point right there, for example. Okay, but we were constrained within a thousand to negative a thousand on the acceleration. There I can see my velocity profiles. Okay, so now um, 
what we want to do is talk about different estimator objectives now. Um, if we, you know, for this problem, we just used a square, uh, a square error, uh, some of squared errors, um, but there's others as well. Okay, so let's just look at the math behind the sum of squared errors. So we're going to be minimizing um, this objective right here. Here's the uh, just in matrix form. Okay, so this is a vector um, of uh, uh, values transpose times this uh, WM, okay, and that uh, should be in, for an optimal estimator, like for a common filter, should be the inverse of the uh, the noise uh, covariance. Um, and uh, here is a forgetting factor as well, okay. So here is the uh, prior model values and uh, the current model values. And so it's, um, it has a uh, forgetting factor of old values that I've estimated in the past. Um, this is a Bayesian estimation technique where you receive a little bit of additional information and then you update uh, the parameters for your model. Okay, and so this is, the, um, this is a piece right here um, in tuning in AP Monitor. This is going to be W uh, model. Okay, so this uh, this term right here, and this is going to be W uh, mes. Okay, so the weight on the measurement and the weight on the model. So if you say I have a very high weight on the model compared to the measurement, then what effectively what you're doing is you are um, smoothing out the profile because you give higher um, weighting to prior values. Okay, and you respond less to noise or uh, changes in new measurement. Okay, and then this middle term right here, this is, um, this is the D cost on uh, your manipulated variables or your parameters, and that is a delta uh, penalty of movement. Okay, so you have a, uh, the movement here, and then the C delta P, that's the cost of moving that parameter. So we often put a small delta cost onto it um, just to uh, to only make it move when it needs to okay not not for you know noise or other things but it, the parameter value is only going to move when there is an a sufficient air that it can um, that it can take care of okay and then we have our model equations here okay so this is the uh, squared air right here and we're going to also talk about um, this is an L1 norm objective. Now, part of the reason why we say L1 norm is because um, if we take uh, it's n to the 1 over n, okay, and then n, if n equals 1, that becomes an L1 norm, okay, so this is kind of like a uh, an absolute value, okay, so that'd be kind of like uh, taking x Okay, and uh, doing the absolute value of that, and uh, we call that the one, uh, the one norm. Okay, now the two norm, which is different than the the squared error, is just uh, x two to the uh, square root or one half. Okay, so this would be um, you know the measurement, uh, the model minus measurement. Oh, sorry, let me do that again. <coughs> model minus measured value, you square that, and then take a square root, okay? And that would be um, denoted as the two norm, and then we also have the infinity norm, okay? So we have uh, infinity, and then to the one over infinity. And what that does is it basically is just minimize uh, the max deviation. Max uh, deviation of model and uh, measurement. Okay, so we have the one, the two norm, and the infinity norm. There are other norms as well, um, but those are the mo some of the most common. Okay, so I'm going to show you here. Um, this is this is a a one norm. It's a it's a different type of formulation that allows us to have a dead band. Okay, so let's say these are my uh, measured values. 
And then I'm going to put a uh, dead band, an upper and lower region around this. Okay, the, so I say as long as I'm within this region, then that's perfectly acceptable. Don't add additional error to my, um, uh, to my objective function. So if my model is down here, it's going to try to shift that up by adjusting the parameters until it gets within this dead band. Okay, and so this is the, uh, these are the equations that allow us to do that. Uh, similar to the one from up above, okay, if you remember, here's a penalty on measured and model. Okay, so here's the penalty right here on the measured values. Okay, and so we call this parameter right here the WMES, and then this one right here is from the prior model predictions, and so this is W uh, model. Okay, that's a, another tuning parameter that we have on our controlled variables or the ones that we're measuring. Okay, and then this again is the uh, delta parameter movement. Okay, and then in this case, this would be a D cost. Okay, or a delta cost of uh, that parameter uh, moving. We only want to move those parameters if there's sufficient decrease in the objective function for doing so. Okay, and then we're subject to our equations from before. This is, would be our model. Okay, and then we have some additional slack variables that are set up right here to implement this in a um, give it continuous first and second derivatives. Um, okay, so um, that is, uh, so what we're going to do now is switch from this form over to the, the L1 norm. And I'll show you how to set this up in in AP Monitor. Okay, um, okay, because some of those equations are can be difficult to uh, to work with. Okay, so what we're going to do is just take the APM info and then go ahead and copy it down here and create a new CV, and that will be x1. That'll be our position. Okay, and then uh, let's just bring up our model file here. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace this objective function right here. We're just going to go ahead and uh, delete that. I'll just comment it out for now before we are defining that in our model file. Now we'll just define it um, here. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll say that uh, we're going to give it a feedback status on. So now we'll use it, uh, use this measured value um, to try to uh, achieve a better or include that as an objective um, in our estimation. And um, okay, so I think that is uh, that is it. And then also the other thing that I can switch, okay, this line right here, EV type, that is uh, currently set to one uh, is the L1 norm objective. And if you set it to two, that's going to be a squared uh, error. Okay, so just one parameter there and it'll switch uh, the objectives for us. Okay, so there is, um, I've defined my CV and then turned its feedback status on. Okay, there's just one other thing I need to do besides saving uh, this. Uh, let's just go ahead and open up our um, CSV file. I'll open it up with a text editor. Uh, just change this. I no longer have Y1 and so just put X1 there and then it needs that um, now that I have it defined as a CV with feedback status on it sets up those objective equations uh, for us. Okay, let me add just one other thing here. Um, this will be our measurement gap and I'll just set that to um, 20. Okay, so as long as it's within that dead band then it's going to um, say that don't, don't move the parameters or those acceleration values anymore. Okay, so you'll see, okay, well I made that uh, way too big. So let me, um, instead of 20, let me do um, maybe two. Okay, I'll do two and okay. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is, um, let's just go ahead and get rid of the plot down here and we'll just open up a web viewer instead. Okay, we can also see the solution through uh, the web viewer. Okay, so let me run it one more time. Run it with F5. 
Okay, so it's going to run it again with the L1 norm. Now instead of uh, this other one, now if I, I'm thinking something isn't quite right here. Okay, so let's see. Let me go back. So I'm got to go back into into debug mode now. Um, hmm. Okay, did it? Let's see if it solved. It solved successfully. We had adjustable degrees of freedom. Okay, and uh, I think I'm missing something here. Um, okay, solve it. And the F status is on. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just pause the video until I can figure out what is uh, what's going on here. But um, I just have a, a bug I need to work through. Okay, so I, f I think I figured it out. Um, I just forgot to save the CSV file. You can see it's red up here. Um, I didn't save it, so you didn't have it defined as uh, X1. The other thing I can do is I can also re just remove this Y1 because I'm no longer using it here in the objective um, equation. Okay, so let's go and try it again. Um, Okay, so I'm going to let it solve again, and then uh, we'll try to take a look at um, the X1 value. So I'm just going to select X1. Okay, and uh, here I'll make this just a little bit larger on the plot. Okay, so you can see here uh, the acceleration, okay, was was limited between 1,000 and negative 1,000. Okay, but it had also this uh, this small dead band here. Okay, only of two. And if I make that just a little bit bigger, okay, so if I come over to, you know, I can do this through my uh, my script again. Okay, so if I close that out and then come over to Mesgap and then maybe set that to 10. Okay, and then run it again. It's going to increase the gap there, that it, and it's only going to try to uh, get it within uh, that gap. Okay, so you can see it just a little bit better here. Um, you know, this gap is just going to try to optimize it to fit as many of those points as possible within this. Okay, uh, so that is um, that is the uh, the L1 norm. If you want to change it over to squared error as well, just change that to a, a two, and then run and. Um, It'll run, and then you'll see that now instead of a dead band, you're just trying to match it to um, the uh, applicable values there um, over the horizon. Okay, so that concludes this tutorial on the estimator objectives. I'll go ahead and post uh, that video uh, right here. Um, there's also, I'll just mention, there's the nomenclature there as well. So if any of those uh, symbols were confusing, you can. You can take a look at this uh, nomenclature for a little additional description on some of those objective terms.